so dad and I have been for years on the fence about getting a roller crimper. Uh, on the one hand, everything you read about roller crimping sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> and I've been reading a lot about roller crimping over the years. Uh, and um, that's kind of on the, on the positive part. The negative part, of course, has always been the price and the actual logistics of application. So about a year ago, about this time, Dad and I are sitting in the Heartland Co-op office talking to Kyle, our fertilizer and chemical guy. We were fairly prepared for the cost of herbicides, but what we weren't prepared for was the language that came along with it, if we can get it, when it's available. And that really started to re-aggravate us <laughs> about how dependent we are on our inputs, especially chemicals in our no-till production system. So on the way home, we decided we were gonna buy a, a roller crimper, no matter what, uh, which we did. Then uh, we got a hold of Stefan and said, we have no idea how to use this thing. <laughs> so we thought we better answer our first question, which is, when's the best time to plant soybeans and then roll crimp the rye cover crop? And it's a pretty, pretty standard question. Uh, we have been planting a no-till drilling a cereal rye cover crop after corn harvest for the last, I don't know, six or seven years. Um, and what we normally do is plant our soybeans into that green and growing rye and then terminate it that day. So uh, we kind of want to do something similar uh, with our uh, roller crimper. As I mentioned, we do no-till drill our cereal, cereal rye. And this year, last year, we had uh, drilled it at um, 90 pounds of the acre right after corn harvest, which happened to be around October 20th, which is getting pretty late for <laughs> using cereal rye as a, as a weed suppressant. Uh, but it's pretty simple, straightforward trial, which we liked. One, plant our soybeans and then roll that uh, rye at anthesis. Two, plant the soybeans and roll at soft dough. Pretty straightforward, which, which we like. We had a few hurdles right off the bat. When we planted this uh, cover crop, we weren't planning on getting a roller crimper. Uh, so we used what amounted to bin run seed. Uh, if you remember a few years ago, we did, we did a uh, trial with Sam Bennett about the, how long you could wait to terminate cereal rye in a soybean crop. And uncharacteristically, we decided to delay that termination on all of our acres and ended up with a lot of cereal rye in our clean grain sample. So we, that's what we saved and planted, and it was not great seed. So what you're seeing here, May 18th, about 10 days, two weeks before, our, before we uh, planted our first round, that rye looks terrible. Uh, we put the side by side and Shyla there and there for a reference. That's about knee high to thigh high. And that's, I mean, you don't even have to measure your biomass to know that's not enough to give you season long weed control. But the reason we selected this spot is it's long and narrow. And uh, it's usually a, a fairly decent place to grow, to grow our cellular rye. But it, this year it's, it's very heavy, poorly drained soil, uh, not tiled and it was a hot and dry year. And so already about this time, we knew we were facing an uphill battle with, with what we were doing. But we were, we were ever the optimistic farmers. Uh, so this is how we, how we laid it out. Uh, again, fairly straightforward. All these strips are 30 feet wide, running the length of the field. Our roller crimper is 30 feet wide, our planter is 30 feet wide, and the bean platform that we use for harvest is 20 feet wide. So that worked out pretty well. And so the results uh, really weren't too surprising. It was a bad year for our soybeans because of the, of the weather. So our, our yield in those early planted strips uh, was about 44 bushels of the acre. Uh, in those later planted strips at dough, uh, 36 bushels of the acre. So we took a pretty good yield hit on that. And when you're talking about $15 soybeans, that doesn't pencil out very well, <laughs> but what I was really happy to see right off the bat was more of a qualitative analysis, and that is that elimination of that first herbicide pass. And that kind of speaks to the idea or the value of not relying so much or starting to wean ourselves off the reliance of these herbicides, expensive herbicides. The other thing uh, that, we, that I struggled with was when you're reading the literature, it says, no worries, go out and roll when it's 80% anthesis. And I think that's what the detail of our field trial called for. Well, when is that? <laughs> There's no real way to go out and say, yes, it's over 80% or no, you know, it's 75%. We should, we should wait a little longer. Um, my first indication was um, 
looking out over, we had planted cereal right in a different part of the farm that was actually planted a little earlier than this. Uh, and we went out one day and the, you could see the pollen blowing across the field. And I started sneezing like crazy. I'm, as it turns out, in a cruel twist of fate, highly allergic to cereal rye pollen. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so I knew it was probably getting time. At least, you know, it looked like it was ready. So, but when you go out, you know, you can see some of the pollen on the ground, but who knows if it's 80% or not. So I would estimate when we rolled that anthesis um, strip, and again, there's no real way to measure this either, what, what percentage of kill did we get? And I would estimate it was probably around 60%. So it wasn't great. And again, I think part of that was due to the different um, stages of growth. Uh, one of the things on that making hay section there, uh, one of the things that the literature also doesn't tell you is you really need to be rolling this cereal rye on a day when it's great for baling hay. On that other part of the farm, we had planted that cereal rye and also rolled it. Well, we rolled it early, well, early 10 o'clock in the morning. It had rained the night before, three hundredths. It was cloudy and that stuff would not roll for the life of us. I mean, it laid down and then popped back up. Even after that rye, you know, we saw that pollen blowing across. We went back, we saved part of that field, went back about one o'clock after lunch and it rolled beautifully. The sun had come out, temperature had come up, the breeze came in and it rolled a, a lot better. So there's a couple of details in there that we weren't especially aware of that maybe would have improved our kill rate. On the soft dough stage, it most definitely rolled better. Uh, one, I do think the day was better. Two, I think of course the, the um, everything had pollinated by then and it snapped over pretty easy. But I think even then, we only got about an 80% kill. Uh, so our next steps. Um, rolling after trifoliate. We had a, a observation trial in another part of the farm where we went ahead and planted the soybeans and let the rye and the soybeans grow together. After trifoliate, we went out and just rolled that cereal rye to see how much damage would occur with, uh, to the soybeans, and we didn't see any. I was expecting to at least be able to see the tire tracks from the tractor when we were harvesting and we didn't see, see that. So I was kind of encouraged that we didn't seem to see too much damage in those soybeans and I think that may help mitigate some of that yield drag we saw be, to be able to plant that soybean crop a little earlier. Um, and we're also going to investigate perhaps, for, I know some uh, organic folks do fertilize their cereal rye crop cover crop to try to get that biomass up. We would like to see a minimum of 8,000 pounds of biomass per acre and um, better yet, 10,000 plus. And we have measured about, I think it was a few years ago, it was at about 8,000 pounds of biomass in a field that was highly productive uh, without fertilizer. So I think it's possible in a good year on good acres. And I feel like with roller crimping, I've stuck my head through this hole in the wall <laughs> to kind of see what was going on and now I can't, I can't get it out because it was so much fun to drop that roller crimper into that um, standing rye and just take off and roll that stuff down. It's a little bit like dropping your bush hog into a big field of ragweed or dropping, even, even though I'm a no-till guy, there is a certain satisfaction in dropping a plow into, into your corn stubble, your bean stubble, right? And you, you take off and there's just like, now we're getting some work done. And I also was thinking, man, what else can I roll? You know, I was looking at these little white mulberry trees and I thought maybe I could roll over those and, you know, set them back and kill them. And, you know, maybe I could roll down some of these other things and all of a sudden you just want to roll everything. <laughs> so, so it really got not only the fun back in farming, but it got my creative juices thinking about what we could do different next time. <laughs>